Thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes or 40 minutes of some advice and some other stuff, some, maybe some tips. tips. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was tips thrown in there too. Yeah, some there? tips, Reasons. all sorts of things. Can, tell you, can you tell it's nearly Christmas? Yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, go on, oh, I stop it. Stop it. I, I heard Christmas songs Christmas. in the in the store the other day and I was like, mm, here we mm. go. I was with you. I was with you when that happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, anyway, I'm Trudy J. So I'm Trudy J and this is the Spa Girls podcast. Did I say that already? I don't even no, remember mm-hmm. now. No, you said no. nothing mm-hmm. important. No. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Trudy J and I'm here with Shar Barrett. Hi there. Cheryl Phipps. Hi. And Wendy Vella. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's already, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Um, my daughter has been, um, we got to decorate the entire house last weekend. So that was very exciting for us. She's mm. been nagging me since the 1st of November to do that. So yeah, I, did, I did mine early. I did mine early. Our neighbors, actually, we just moved into the area and, and he's he's lovely. And he was like, Are we going to put lights up? And I'm like, Our lights will be better than yours. And he's like, So every time I go out there and put lights up, he goes out and puts more lights up. <gasps> so we've got this whole competition going. And I get these texts from him saying, you're an absolute loser. We've won. Ours are way better classier than yours. So little does he know that we went out yesterday and bought a six foot Santa. <laughs> anyway. Oh my gosh. I'm coming to visit your place. We'll see who oh, wins. I love it. Oh yeah. my god. Anyway, anyway, so All we're right, actually sorry. on a podcast here talking yeah. about writing. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mm-hmm. Self-publishing. Um, so today's topic is all about the writing process and kind of how our processes have changed. So mm-hmm. it's not publishing, it's not the marketing, it's the it's the writing itself and what we've been doing and how it's changed over time, and maybe talking about the different ways you can do that. And the reason this came up for us as a topic was that Wendy, the da- delightful Wendy, um, has been writing a book with her son. So, mm. and so Wendy's going to talk to you about that and you can hear mm. about that, the, what's been happening there and then Is we'll there go on. Is there a pre-order from... available at this point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not yet. A little bit of, not, you know. What, yeah. what age group are we looking at, Wendy? Okay. So uh, a little bit mm. of backstory. Uh, he's had a surgery on his arm, his shoulder, and he likes to be a very active, he's a very active man. And um, he's. Professional <laughs> sports person. Yeah. So he's had uh, all sorts of things done, re- reconstruction of his shoulder and muscles reattached and stuff. So he's out, like he's basically out for six to eight months and he's like a cage lion because this is a man that's always on the go. So I said to him, because we, we talked about a book ages ago, he had some ideas and I said, do you want to write that book, mate? And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it, mum. So he, it was quite an interesting thing for me because I knew I was coming at it at the angle where I was the experienced one. And I don't know what your teenage, your children are like, but they think they know everything and you know nothing. So it was always going to be a very interesting meet in the middle scenario. So I'm a romance writer and he is not a romance writer. So there was, he was or a reader. reader. <laughs> yeah, or reader. So I, he was like, okay, so I said to him, okay, you need to do the planning. Uh, and then we'll get together. So he's very much like me insofar as he wants to see results. So the planning side of it uh, was quite tough for him, but I said to him, you need to sit down and write what you want in each chapter, which I'd never done in my life, but I thought it would be good for him. I love <laughs> it. Do, do what I, I say, not what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Children all over the world need yeah, to know yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, so I said to him, do you want to read some books? No, I've got you. Okay, yeah. I said, fine. So it, it the... The process is quite interesting because he can't type. Clearly. And what, what kind of book is it? Just so it's going to be uh, it's going to be sort of a thriller. Uh, I think more or more. It's very born identity. Let's just say it's like okay. that. It's, that is, oh. You know, it's about sports and medicine and drugging and you know that sort of thing and in, in hierarchy and and he's got athlete A, athlete B, athlete C, athlete D. It's very it's very very well thought out. So we sat down and I thought, well, this is going to be quite hard because he. It's not like we butt heads, but we both know, I know what I want to do as a writer and he knows what he wants to do anyway, because he's my child and thinks he knows everything. So um, it was quite an interesting process. We sat down together and um, we started the first chapter. And so we've worked out that he knows what he wants to write. And then I write it and then we rework it. So we've got a few chapters down and it's working really well. I think the, the, the big learning curve is, for me, I'm a romance writer and there's going to be not a lot of romance in it. So it's like he said to me, mum, I see the way you've written the first chapter, but it's too flowery, you know, and I'm just, yeah. he, and he said, and I want to kill off some people. And I'm just, I felt physically ill actually at that moment. But, <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm like, do we have to have people die? He said, mum, 
it's one of those books where people are going to die and people that you like characters you like and <gasps> i'm thinking an old i'm thinking the old family doctor and i'm just like oh, <gasps> you know what that's going to do to people he said only people like you mum you know <laughs> So anyway, what I, where I'm going with this is I think it's actually made me re-examine my writing process a little bit. It's something that I've taken for granted because I'm actually have to phys- having to physically talk out loud about my process and about mm. the book, whereas I never do that. I just write a book. It stays in my head. But now I'm having to go talk to him about it. It's, it's really quite an interesting thing to see, something that I... As you guys are the same we've all developed as we've gone on and, and we just take it for granted this is how we write this is what we do so, so what have you learned then what are the things that maybe um, I think it I think it, it's quite interesting uh, in so far as it's okay I'm, I'm someone who likes I'm very linear uh, you know what a to b and and that's that's you know that's the way I write I don't sort of go a to z why 19 whatever and he's like okay so let's if we move to this chapter how about we we put something down there to say that this is going to happen to here so I've been trying to explain to him about the beats of writing and how the acts work and how each chapter must finish on it and and it's got to be driven forward but that's something we do naturally you try and explain that to someone that in each chapter everything has to drive the forward and for example yesterday we were writing a chapter and I said to him babe that nothing's happening in this chapter it's just flower it's we're just talking about things that are, you know like we've mm. got to do something he's and he wanted to kill someone but i just said to him no chilling no no i watch i'm just saying i think you know when you stand back and actually review your writing process it's quite intriguing mm. um so, so is there anything that you're going to change? Like, basically, like you, said he was quest- you said he was questioning stuff and, and that you were kind of going, yeah, oh, like actually. I was, yeah, for sure. Like I was saying, you know, um, having to actually tell him the way I write. So I was having to actually bring out, okay, this is what I do. This is where I go. And he was questioning me about, well, why do you do it that way? Why must it be linear? Or, or why must we fill out the chapter completely to 3,000 or 2,000 words, however many write? Why can't we just write it to 700 and then go on to the next chapter and then go back and rewrite it then? And I'm just like, huh. Um, and because that's the way I do it, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I would do that. Yeah. yeah. I would do that easily. I, I don't have a set amount mm. that, a, that a chapter has to be, but I would I would definitely get the bones of it and then come mm. back to it mm. 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 yeah yeah well that's right I'm someone who it might be the Virgo in me but I'm someone who likes it to complete okay when I get to the the draft is very rough don't get me wrong yeah. but the chapters are formed you know and he he's more of the and another thing I don't put visual a visual anything visual in like he said instantly he sent me two pictures he said this is athlete a and this is athlete d and I'm just like why do we need pictures of them we just create them he said because that's what I want them to look like yeah I'm like oh that's interesting yeah. <laughs> you know like so that side of things he's like so I know who I'm writing about mum you know well, and well, I'm lots just of like, people do do yeah. storyboards yeah, don't they? yeah. Mm. I mean yeah. I don't I mean I when I was writing about a castle I definitely had a, a picture of a castle mm. I've know, never done that not in my life oh I, I have all sorts of things I've got a picture yeah. of a dragon and then I made little people and photoshopped it next to the dragon. So I had a, a, a sense of a how size. big the dragon would yeah. look. Yeah. How long did people. that take you? Not long. I'm, I'm pretty good at Five hours you could have been writing, mate. You not need five to go... hours. It took me like 10 minutes, for God's sake. Oh, my God. Do you remember um, having Jenny Creasy, Jennifer Creasy, the writer, come out and talk about how she would make um, like collages, like yeah. really detailed, yeah. like yeah. amazing because she was an art yeah. teacher. Um, mm. There's... I don't know that I'm pretty sure there's a blog post on that but from her that's well worth looking up um her blog was used to be called arg think a-r-g-h-i-n-k I think but anyhow um but it was just like like I could spend a year making one of those cool collars oh I could <laughs> see you doing it Sharon. So, yes, but yeah. it was for some people that works yeah, you know the, yeah. the visual thing so yeah. I think I didn't, I never used to. There's, there's a lot of changes that I've been making in my writing at the moment. And I I sort of would vaguely have pictures of people sometimes, but not really. Whereas mm-hmm. what I've realised is that I'm not describing people enough. Like I don't have a strong enough, I, I have a sense of them vaguely in my head and I just keep writing and stuff. But I think I need us to get a stronger sense of what they look like. It actually helps it me to help. have a yeah. picture of that person. So I've got yeah. pictures of, of the um, characters in the book that I'm currently editing and I've had I have them up on the screen to kind of look at and kind of give me kind of just a 
more of a sense of, of how I could describe them or what, you know, like just to. For me, yeah. it's the name. I don't care about anything else. I just need to have the name and, and that can take time for me to find a name. Mm. It's got to be the right name. And that's when I said to him, what is he going to be called? He said, who cares? Let's just start mm. writing the book. And I'm Athlete like, a. <laughs> I, just, I just read back and I'm just like, no, no, no. We are not starting this book without a name. I actually did did um, Google like um, names that um, come up a lot. I don't know what the site is called now, but it's easy. It's easy to just jump online and search, put a search in for something like that in America because I found that the names that I was thinking of were very English. Yeah, yeah. You know, or or New Zealand, you know, yeah. and actually that, that didn't kind of fit in the setting, if you know what I mean. So I did, yeah. I did do that. I did just yeah. spend a bit of time, especially when I was looking at generations back. You know what their parents would have been called. Mm. I thought that was um, yeah, that, yeah, that was helpful to me. And talking about, so you need the name. Um, this is not me, but this is, so a friend of mine was talking about doing the course with Maggie Stivator. I don't, her name is really hard and confusing and I don't well, know, but it. she's like a, a young adult fantasy author and um, and she has this course and she talked like um, about how she doesn't, can't start writing a book until she knows the mood of the book, mm. which I thought was really interesting. So, so she had to know. Do you like, mean so, mood as in? Like stay or kind tropey or like as a season or she she always writes romance it's fantasy it's I mean it's young adult so she kind of knows those sorts of things like it's but it's more like bittersweet love or something oh, or, right, 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 or right. like enemies to lovers or but no not not but like a universe the of fantasy so the bittersweet thing is the mood right like it's yeah. not an enemy it's a bittersweet feeling that she's yeah. gonna it's gonna Boyness run through it so or, it, or it's gonna be a it's gonna be a following a, or a, a happy go lucky light-hearted thing yeah. you know like that's yeah. that there's a there's a real sense of the, the the feeling or the emotion that she wants to evoke in the readers as they're reading it and mm. once she knows that then she can kind of create the characters yeah. create the scene create the and I think that's an amazing way to look at and it and it would actually. also dictate the setting too because yeah. you couldn't have something that was sort of light-hearted and whimsical if you were living in a you know grotto like a, like a, a super modernistic you know minimalistic kind of concrete building kind of thing yeah like it would yeah dictate so and much. and maybe you do that automatically like maybe you're writing um like we write a lot of romance right so romance has a certain you know you know that it's going to be a certain thing but but actually knowing the kind of romance it's going to be is actually quite good too like I think Wendy you you're looking there kind of not sure about it but I think if you probably looked it into your books you would kind of see a kind of you know the the feeling that you wanted to evoke in your readers as you're as you're going through it mm. and maybe yeah, it's just you're looking at yourself this. I can tell by the look on her face that she's like this sounds <laughs> yeah. like yeah. this yeah. is exactly the kind of thing <laughs> yeah. I think Wendy I think Wendy writes for herself right yes. and she writes the kind of books that she would want to read and I think she's but she's by doing that she's creating the emotion like for herself if that makes mm. sense so that's yeah I don't yeah. know that's I mean so if strange. I wouldn't write a book that I didn't want to read myself reread myself yeah yeah in the story and you're the same shit uh, absolutely absolutely but I have to say that one little thing that helps me is is covers um mm. I've, mm. I've been not not all of them but just lately I've been picking up covers and I know as soon as I see them the story that I want to write and mm. from knowing that comes the characters and mm. also yeah and do you think that's the same right you feel a certain yeah. mood or a yeah. style from the cover yeah. and yeah. then that gives you the where you're going yeah. so you just kind of need this something whether it be a cover or a it's name it's a visual or, it's what we're yeah, something it's to visual. give you a sense and yes. then you can you, it's then not you, mood it's visual with her that's the difference no but she's but she's yeah. getting i think she gets a, a a sense of something more from than just the the visual thing it's yeah. like you get a sense and, of something that appeals to me so much like you know the colors even but also immediately I can see what might what the murder might be if I'm doing a cozy mystery like what the murder yeah. might be and and then how that might happen just in the cover yes yeah. you know I, I mean obviously That's the idea yeah I mean you, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the right one to be fair yeah but yeah yeah it's interesting just works so so that's cool. So that's kind of how we're sparking off the, the writing and getting into the book. So what about... Think, sorry, I think we've all... I think the thing about our process is they've developed and changed. We're just not aware that they've developed mm. and changed, you know, mm. like, and I think for me, writing with the boy, it's like 
that's what I've I've seen. Mm. And and that's quite hard when you and we all write solitary. That's our gig. Occasionally mm. we'll sit together side by side, but I would never reach over and go to Cheryl, you've got your comma in the wrong place there. Can you do something with no. that? You know, like I mean, I don't know. Slap. I can imagine that conversation happening. No, she would no. slap me, like let's be honest. I'd be um, like, sure. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> that you know where your comma goes. I don't know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're being on that. But what I'm saying is it's like trying to challenging that process is quite a tough thing when you've been doing it for as long as I have is what I'm mm. saying and I'm just like and when you're writing with someone who's not just someone who's like wants to collaborate with you but mm. someone who's your blood and who you love and who knows you better than you you know you know you know well yourself yeah. uh, it's quite an interesting to and fro is, mm. is and that's it's really it's it's a good thing you which, know which leads leads you also to the point that when you're starting out you shouldn't get bogged down in the fact that you have to know your process right from the word go because yeah. it's something that evolves. It's not something yeah. that I need to do this, this, and this. Of course, you have to have parameters, but um, you know, it's not it's not hard and fast, and it will change. And mm. I, I, and I think here we are, how many years down the tracks? Like uh, track, like um, you know, eight or nine years, and we're not the same writers that we were. When we began. No, and our processes are not the same. And I think it's important. So much. And it's important to change things up a little bit too, I think. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Like I've just I'm doing this wedding wager collaboration with a whole lot of writers. And that's interesting too, because everyone's different and you're given, you know, a mm. setting or a month mm. or whatever. And and whereas you've always done it for yourself and now you're doing, you know, so that's mm. different too. And I think that sort of stuff, challenging yourself mm. is a good thing. Yeah. You know. And it's even like look, with like from what she was saying, like learning as you go. I mean, like for you, Wendy, I've tried to help you to um, plot things and you just can't and it destroys right, your whole yeah. process mm. and it, it doesn't work for you. And then mm. me, I've tried to, I mean, that's why it took me 10 years to write a book because I was trying to not plot and mm. I didn't know where I was going and I went everywhere except mm. where I should have been going, you know? like So it's mm. just different people need different processes. And mm. if there's one person out there saying you have to do it a certain way, well, it yeah. doesn't Take work like that and <laughs> every every writer has a different different way of doing mm. it one one that intrigues me actually is um listening to um new zealand author um she writes as stephanie holmes actually and she has a thing called the, the um, skeleton draft and i think i'm going to try this next time i write it intrigues me enough um and it's where she just writes like a shorter, like say maybe 25 to 30,000 word kind of first draft. And she's just almost getting the story out and not worried about too much of the, you know, not much detail. And sometimes she'll just write, insert something here and just needs this mm -hmm. and da, da, da. And then she goes back to the beginning and writes the second draft and fills it all out until it becomes mm -hmm. the, the longer novel and then does all that. And I, I'm kind of intrigued by that concept because I think, that's what I've realized I have to do as a, as a writer as I write this the, the the first draft that's really rough and needs all these things and then I have to go back in and I add in a lot of like a lot of the detail and the, the description of the people and mm. the, you know things that I'm not putting in and so that's yeah I don't know I'm, I'm intrigued by that yeah, yeah. it could be a way to to get to something finished because it's I mean a lot of us you know hand up here I've talked about it extensively before but have struggled to actually finish something and that mm. could be a way of you in that mode to maybe give yourself permission to just you know write a few hundred words per chapter instead of three thousand or whatever mm. just to actually get to the end point because yeah no, yeah. I think we have to establish the fact it's not easy, right? <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, we all get to a certain point. Like I've just hit that point in my book and I'm just like, la 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 la. Mm. You know, like <laughs> make it stop. And then all of a sudden I'll get to 50,000 and I'm boom, I'm away again. Yeah. Middle mm. 20. And there's different it's parts hard. that people enjoy. Like teeth, we've talked mate. to writers that really enjoy the editing process. They love that process, you know, and mm. other people, it's they just want to be a one and done and do it, you know. Um, yeah. So that's and okay I, too. I think it depends also on what kind of writer you are. Like I know that's something I learned when I was collaborating with an author friend of mine. And she writes really sparsely and um, and then adds words in when she goes to the editing process. Like she and then I overwrite and I have to go and cull words out, like yeah. cut out all the extra words mm -hmm. when I'm editing. And um that, yeah, and it's you, you've got a different process if you have those different mm -hmm. two different styles. It's quite interesting. Um I find it, I think I'm pretty sure that all of us as writers find other writers' processes 
interesting like it is yeah. interesting it's mm. how many you know, what is it how many ways can you whatever Skin a cat. That's yeah. one, but yeah. I, I think I think we're always <laughs> looking for the um or maybe maybe it was just me but the the best or the right way to do it you know yes. there's that kind of sense that maybe you're not doing it right and there's someone else or some other system the that's, golden that's, nuggets that yeah, yeah the thing is yeah. I think if you look at all of us right we're all different mm. Mm. She is a hybrid of you and me, Trudels, and you know you're more of a, a plotter. I'm more. I'm a pantser, hardcore. Um, you know, like so. It's it's. I think. It, I think the problem is there were so many people out there. They're preaching to you about what you should be doing. Mm. So trying to force a square peg into a round hole, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I know because I have tried every plotting plot thing there is out there technique yeah. <laughs> yeah. i have given it a nudge and i've just had to come to the realization that i wrote thirty thousand words and then i rewrite yeah. the whole thing you know yeah, like the it, irony is now that you're writing with your son that mm, it's, you're changing that process again and so yeah you, it'll be very interesting at the end once it's going to be a battle of wills completed. i can see the worlds battling i can see it's going to be yeah, a battle of wills it'll be very interesting mm. to see how it impacts mm. on your actual own Usual yeah it's actually turned into a family book too because there's like my daughter reads that stuff and so she's been giving him books to read and his partner is like well, what about this so like it's like a, i've really got cool. everyone like coming that. in from every angle and 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 i was upstairs and my husband was downstairs and he's shouting up at suggestions and <laughs> just like okay it's a community project <laughs> It's a family Why bonding not? exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, I think it is. I think yeah. it's, I think it's, no, it's a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. So, hey, yeah. Yeah. Well, the one question I have is, has, has anyone ever subscribed to or done the concept, um, what's his name, Robert Heinlein, where he does no. the, the one draft and that's it? You know, no, no more, in, except maybe that you've been told to editorially. Like, I don't think anybody to. would ever read a book of mine if I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know oh, Susan Napier. Yeah. Was it Susan Napier? She was a one draft girl. That was yeah, thing at the end. It was done. Because yeah. it's Dean, um, Dean. Marie Force, I think, is, is mm. oh, really? it's very yeah. clean when it comes out at the end. Yeah. And, yeah. Dean Wesley Smith does it, but then he writes lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Um, and he has become a better writer, I believe, personally, from just writing lots and lots and lots and lots. Yeah. So maybe his early drafts, his early one drafts. Are I maybe... definitely think you get better the more you write. Mm. Oh. I just... So let's, let's talk about Heinlein. So who was Heinlein, Trudy? Tell us about Robert Heinlein. Yeah. Some, some random, was he a oh. science fiction author <gasps> in the, in the so 1930s and 40s? Oh. 40s? <laughs> um, but he had these, I don't know, was it six rules? Heinlein's rules. Five rules. Five? Oh, five I wrote six, rules. but I think the sixth one was write more. Um, yeah, and it was like a 1947 Yes, an essay article. on how to write speculative fiction. Um, oh, there you go. Um, are you drinking wine there? Looks like Sha? wine, doesn't it? I have my water. It's got orange juice in it. I have uh, it in okay. a wine glass because I don't drink any alcohol and it makes me feel fancy if I have it in like yes yeah. oh, you looked very fancy I was I was yeah. very convinced yeah. well, I like um, to trot it out for the podcast once a week <laughs> so so Heinlein said, <laughs> Heinlein said um you must write you must finish what you start um and you know rewriting unless you've been told by editorial order which I assume means that you're not you personally but your editor tells mm -hmm. you to do it um and then you must put it on the market and you keep it on the market till it sells so that was if he was writing All rules that apply to today's self published writer. <laughs> yeah. Except, I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't believe in only doing one draft. I and I don't that's... believe in keeping it on the market until it sells because what if Jimmy... it never smell? it sells? It smells. Yeah. It smells. It smells. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I mean, that, but then there are there are authors out there in the world who who fully believe in those rules and and follow them and are very successful. So yeah, it's... I would I would challenge that hit by the you must not rewrite would be that you actually got to finish the book rather than keeping going rewriting that same yeah. first three chapters. Maybe I mm. might I might yeah. That, no, I'm not that suggesting that you should rewrite the first three chapters. I just mean you should finish it and then edit it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. if you struggle to write. Ah, so the yeah. great writer Robert J. Sawyer suggested adding a six rule, which is start working on something else. Mm. Mm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That was where the six one came from. Yeah. I think, and I think the thing is, you can always find a reason not to write if you struggle to finish a book. Oh, and sure. The thing you have to be sure. aware of. Once you know you can do it, it yeah. changes things. It just, yeah. I yeah. think things just switch up. But, but do you find, though, now that you know that you can do it, though, do you not 
succumb to the I need to fold the washing or do the vacuuming. No. Oh, I do. I do. Hmm. I do. But but Wendy and Cheryl no. Oh, if, Wendy and Trudy no. If I really. if I'm in the zone, yeah. I don't want to move from my chair. Yeah. Mm. So the, the, but, you know. But getting in the zone can take time, right? You've got to write yourself into it the can. zone. Like you yeah. said, was a prime example. I said, I don't want to sit at my computer. Mm. Um, so I sat. Uh, and then I wrote and wrote and wrote and about an hour yeah. later I was there you know mm -hmm. but it just takes time but I also find changing scenery like I got up the other day and just went out to a cafe and wrote you know I think I think also that's that same thing as like if you don't take breaks like that's what I used to do I used to sit mm -hmm. in my chair and yeah. try to stay there for three hours three mm -hmm. or four hours and then I'd get up and I'd be exhausted and I'd be like oh I can't keep going versus you know writing for half an hour taking a break writing for half an hour yeah. you know like I've the been Pomodoro. doing that lately yeah just getting up yeah. Time is yeah. there. And yeah, actually, is. folding the washing, that's a good thing to do because you're outside, mm. you can, you know. Mm. Anyway, so, is, that, is that off so your let's processes? Let's go over everybody's processes then. Yeah. Let's, All right. Like, and how it's possibly changed over the last, say, 10 years. Okay. So, Wendy, when you're writing oh, by yourself. Oh, I knew you were going to come for me. Please. When you're writing by yourself, <sighs> what would be like starting with so the from from idea, an idea start to from idea finish um, book i think because i write series i have the uh, it's a weird weird scenario it's like a, a microchip inserts itself in my brain as i come to the end of a book and it's going bang this is what you're writing next and it's always the same and then i start like you know okay that's that's where i'm going that's cool so where by the um when i start i just um i because i write series i know where i'm going where i'm what i'm in what world I'm in, what are the names of the characters. Um, and so I usually, tr I like to work out in my head what the um, suspense element is, because stupidly I've always put a suspense element in my books and um, have to find that. Yeah, so stupid. No, so then I just start and I write. And then I write to about 30,000 words and it's like wading through porridge up to your neck to about 30,000 words uh, and then I hit 30,000 words and I go back and completely rewrite that um, and bam I'm away um, and like even last night I woke up about four and I was like ah I got it now I got what was wrong and what I needed to change and now I can see it all and and um, I'm away you know um, that's like hallelujah moment that one yeah right? so at four o'clock in the morning I was terrified that I wouldn't remember so I stood my phone up and I looked at that in the morning standing up and I was like oh that's right so uh yeah imagine um, that losing the aha moment yeah of the middle yeah of yeah uh so unfortunately I've got three books in my head at the moment so that's Nate's book, <laughs> my book, and my next book. So, and then there's the book that I'm doing for someone else. So that's yeah, it's a bit confusing. And so yeah. when you get to the end of that first draft, hmm. so you've you've written thirty, and then yep. you've gone back and rewritten the thirty, and then you finish it. Yeah. Do you then go back and is there much to do for the whole thing, or is it pretty? Yeah. You're, you're pretty good with it. I do complete two complete rewrites. Mm. Really, read throughs, but yeah, two. Two. Uh, yeah, and then third. Thank goodness you can type like the wind. So yeah. do you change much when you do that rewrite? Like, is it quite? Yeah, I will usually add in, take out ten thousand words and write in fifteen or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fifteen, twenty, depending on the book, depending on how quickly I've written it, um, and depending on how well it flowed. And, uh, and then, yeah, and so I'll completely rewrite and take out and all the bits in there that say put food here or put da da da. So I'll go in and do all that, and then make sure that there's continuity with the characters in the last book, and that the green eyes are the same as the ones in um so there's all that and then uh i will the last thing i do is i will email it to myself and read it on my kindle with my mac open now instead of printing it and then that's just a different view and then you just find a whole lot more stuff mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. me basically and and sort of sort so you have the mac open so you if you see a mistake on the kindle you'll fix it on the mac straight away yeah Oh, interesting. Well, it just saves printing it out. I don't like printing it out. And then because it's just another thing. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, I've got to go back through that 80,000 words of paper and change it does all the markers. Look like a lot. It is daunting, I have to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't do that anymore. Um, I used to, one of the processes I used to have is I used to have it reading back, reading it back to me I as I was looking say. at it. Yeah. I stopped doing that because uh, the guy's voice drove me crazy. You um, can change so, the voice. You know, I know that, right? But I uh, even so. <laughs> Uh, so I, I found that reading on the Kindle and then just um, doing the Mac as I do it has worked well. Mm. That's, yeah. That process you have that has changed mm. a reasonable amount mm. then. Mm. You know? 
yeah and you yeah. know what's good about that is that you like I think there would have been a maybe I mean make correct me if I'm wrong here but for a certain number of times when you get to 30,000 and you realize you had to rewrite you would have been going oh my god this is a disaster yeah. rah, rah. whereas now you just go oh that's just my process like that's just what happens that's right but you, I, like I, if I had had written a 10,000 word outline plotted it I'd have been really annoyed that I've written 10,000 words and I weren't using it wasn't mm. using it that's 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 the mm. mental that's the mental thing for me it's like if I'm gonna write something on that book it's gonna move it forward you mm. know it, it and that's just not laziness to a degree but I just can't be bothered that's just me with plotting yeah but you say that you don't plot but I think you know it all in my head yeah like you just I have spreadsheets I have spreadsheets I do yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. all right so what so about you share bear yeah yeah um well like I say lately and, and it has helped me um speed up the process a little bit at times um is the cover looking at the cover um, if I'm writing series, it's a lot easier because I'm, I'm pulling from the characters that I already have, especially if I've got a main character that's flowing through the series, that's, that's pretty good. But the actual writing process is um, I do sit down and write every day when I'm writing a book. You know, there, there are times that I'm doing other stuff, so I'm not writing, editing, whatever. So I, re I write the book. Um, I get up to about uh, 45 K roughly that's kind of like a benchmark for me then I go through and do the whole thing again and I've beside me I've always got my chapter breakdown so I'm adding to that all the time and that can be a little bit of a, a shift in mindset when I'm struggling I'll go back and retype it up so it's all perfect um, <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I know I know I'm procrastinating right I know at the time that I'm doing it but when I see it all nice in front of me I've got something clean to go with again. It just, yeah, it just does break it up a little bit. So I do that. I, I read it all through again. Sometimes I'll print it off for my husband and um, he's, he's, he's got, gotten less, you know, digging at it that I would like more from that. So um, that doesn't trouble me too much. But then when I get to the stage before it's going to go to the editor, like Wendy, I load it onto my Kindle. But what I do is that's my bedtime reading. And then I highlight stuff and um, I will add in stuff and I'll take out double words and things like that. And it's just a, it's kind of like a clean edit. So then when I go start on it the next day and I might have, I might have read like so many chapters. So that's, that's breaking my day into a couple of processes because I could work on another book in the afternoon, but in the mm -hmm. morning, it's all fresh in my mind with the editing and I edit what I've read the night before. Mm. and so and I and you, you've actually got the ability to type in whole sentences and, I, and mm. I'm, I'm reading on an iPad so um, a mini so not the big one but it's easy enough to type in that so you're typing mm. notes into the actual Kindle yeah. document yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah. so okay. I highlight it so and I and I have two colors so I have one color that's delete and another color highlighted so there's a problem here and in behind that you click on an edit button and then you can write as much as you like, really. But it's usually only a sentence or two. And sometimes it's just a word that will remind me how what I've got to change. Yeah. So do you yeah. have your so do you have your iPad beside you then when you go back the next morning? Yeah. And you're yeah. Like, oh, so very cool. instead, instead of having the printed out one. copy, mm. which again I've stopped doing for myself, instead of having the printed copy, I've just got the Kindle oh. at the iPad. And uh, yeah, I can have it sitting right beside my laptop and typing straight into it. It's just um yeah it's just it, that is a huge evolution for me and it's, yeah. I think I've only done it for the last couple of books but mm. I really love it because yeah um, me too you know sometimes if you're sitting at your your um, laptop for hours and hours you don't see as no. much as you need to no isn't Whereas that I weird think, you can't uh, see it on your laptop yeah. when you're writing it yeah mm. Mm. yeah but if it's, it's the same it's, way as changing a scenery when you're writing yes. helps. It's like changing yes. the, the way you're looking yeah. at it can help you see different mm. things too. Yeah. yeah. Turning things upside down, going a different way at it. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Trail Trudels? What were you going to call me? Trail? I don't know. Trail. Something. I was something. About, probably something horrible, but Trello. That's all good. I don't know. Yeah. Trello. As long um, as I'm calling you something, mate, that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. It's not like that. Um, so anyway, my system, um, I, what have I been doing? 
get the idea I'm writing I'm getting a bit sick of the series that I'm in I know that sounds horrific this um but I've, I've got in a five book series and I've written I've written the fifth book in one of the series and I have to write the fifth in the other series and I'm really struggling to actually write that so I just it's, say you don't have to Trudy I give you permission not to do it she does no, have I have to. to I do I I've need to finish the series to. overarching thing yeah she I does have to, have to. It. we've discussed this yeah no no I'm going to do it it's just it's just been something that I'm blocking out I'm not blocking mm -hmm. it a little bit but anyway that's fine I will do it um but so I get the idea I plot it out so I have a mix a, a system that was kind of a mix between um the Michael Haig kind of um stuff that he suggests that we do and then the story grid he had a sort of a, a flow of plotting and and what I've but what I've realized this year is that I was overly focusing on the plot and not um focusing enough on the characters and their motivations and all that kind of stuff so I've gone through and I'm adding that kind of stuff back into a, one of the series um, so next time I write I'm going to be adding more of that kind of stuff in so there's going to be um, a, a bit more of uh, planning out the the arc in terms of the character and what they might do and how they would act for being a certain way and all that kind of stuff so um, and when I'm writing I I'm like Wendy I like it. I'm, I'm fairly linear I kind of do try to write from it from A to Z, like I've said, um, and get it in a in a row. Um, and I am an overwriter, so um, which well, I, I had a, an edit come back and say that I was an underwriter in one aspect, in that I don't give enough background information to. Um, or I haven't been giving enough background information so that you can understand the motivations of the character. Um, so there's that, but I'm over overwriter in that I blah 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 blah, 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 blah like, like write all these extra words in, and I when I'm editing I go through and I take a lot of them out, like all the extraneous that's and really and very and you know any yeah, ly yeah. words that I can get rid of I try to get rid of yeah. and that kind of thing is all in the in the second draft. And ever since we had Rachel Heron on. Um, talking about her editing process I kind of liked what she had to say and I've listened to a few other things that she's um, said on editing so um, I've been doing a bit more of that kind of thing so I think um, for me I feel like my writing process has changed quite a lot like my very yeah. first books mm, that I, I used to write were just I bled it out and I just wrote the story and I go all sorts of weird places and then I hated the idea of wasting that time like yeah so then I became yeah, a, you've a, got a better a direction plotter. before you start. Yeah, yeah and, and and so if I have a, a direction and a and a, mm. it, someone said it to me in terms of a career, but but you could kind of use it in terms of a writing as well. Is that you you think of crossing a bridge over a river, and you think of the handrails that you have on each side, and and you want a structure so that you kind of know that you're not going to fall into the river. So that's mm -hmm. the structure that you want is these handrails that kind of help you, you know, it's not, it's mm -hmm. not kind of stopping you sort of walking side to side on the bridge, but it's mm -hmm. just stopping you from falling into the river and kind of being led astray. So I kind of like that idea. It's like having a structure and a, and a format to how I write gives me that kind of feeling of kind of going in the right direction mm -hmm. um, and knowing that I'm not kind of, you know, like sometimes I'm a bit sort of like I'll start writing and I'll, and I'll go crazy and I'll go all over the show. Rah, 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 the, the dragon came and it killed them all. And then there was a, whatever. And it's not really <laughs> focused, shall we say. Handrails. Handrails. See, and, that, and when I do that, there's no handrails and I'm kind of like swimming down the river trying to get back to the bridge. Yeah, but yeah. if there's... <laughs> This hand Stay within place. the rails. Yeah, Stay within yeah. The rails, like, and yeah. I'm not saying that they have to be really tight rails no. that are holding you in place. Mm. They're just kind of rails there that are kind of guidelines. Mm. Yeah, a, wide, yeah. a double bridge, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Two, maybe a two double trucks bridge could pass maybe. over it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But as long as he's got some some whatever, you're mocking me now. But <laughs> <laughs> we got you. We got you. Yeah. We got you, mate. And um, so there's Sorry, that. And I can't think of what else do we say about our writing? I can't remember what else I was supposed to be talking about. Um, um, your process, emotion, really. Your and process and about emotion that you're really starting to. Yeah. So this year, a little bit more. I feel like I've been in this process of changing my whole way of doing things. I mm. think I, I wrote the Dragon series because I was um, felt like my first series hadn't done as well as I wanted to. And I wrote the Dragon series trying to be really on, on market. And that did do really well in the beginning, but then it's all dragged out. So, you know, um, and then this latest series didn't do as well as I was hoping it would be, would do. 
and, and I couldn't figure out why. And so this year has been a process of kind of getting people editing and looking at it and, and then now editing it myself and figuring out what I've done and learning heaps around that. And, and it actually has been amazing. Like I, I've mm. been loving it, but it's, it just means that my process is now very, very different mm. to what it used to be. And it's quite it hard for me to right. kind of you pin it down do at the it. moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you have to be a open. slow cooker approach now as opposed to maybe, mm. you know, kind of yeah. I think it's just, oh, it's just like I'm doing everything. Before I was like, if I plot, then I only have to do one draft and then I can just pretty much, that draft goes up because I plotted it and I know where it's going. Whereas now I'm kind of like, actually, I could still pl maybe less, less plotting, a little bit less plotting, mm. but knowing more about the characters and how they might mm. act in certain situations and doing it like that. But then I need to go back through it afterwards and actually do a really good edit of it like actually kind of really look at break it all down and this is what Rachel Heron does I think you know break it all down and look at it and see <laughs> look at Wendy <laughs> <laughs> she's like no <laughs> I was just about sick in my mouth then <laughs> no but it's just kind of what I've done for these last books and I, I don't know maybe Sounds it won't work, maybe it won't be that bad mm -hmm. but it's just I know that I'm now not writing enough description in terms of what characters look like and how they're acting and I I don't know I've just I've just learned all these things it's good going it's to, a good thing that you're reviewing your process you know it's going to be what you want to be yourself up to new things is, mm. is a really, oh, really good I'm idea. all about that yeah yeah except if you have to change anything because then you're not well, about that well no 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 but well I do, you I are more about that, it yeah I, I think there comes a time when you have to say right well apart from you know little tweaks here and there this, this is, is my me. process yeah. and until it doesn't work yeah then, yeah. You know, yeah but I so so, sorry, Trudels, I'll let you finish and then I just mm. had, I, I had, feel like had I've an finished. observation. Yeah, no, you finished. go. Well, and I, I mean, she's got the experience in here. This is me just as a beginner, but as somebody that has written and finished romances before I, and is trying to finish a cozy mystery, the difference between writing those two is dramatic for me. Um, and maybe it's because I kind of brought up on romance and I've got the kind of the beat thing and the emotional thing kind of um uh, what's the word embedded in me as a reader so it's mm. a little easier whereas the cozy mysteries you've got to have much more plotting to it so you know where to put things yeah. Yeah, really when <laughs> I don't know. you need to start like, plotting oh, shield <laughs> maybe That's i don't gotta... but it's, no. i find it it's so it's much slower writing and it's much harder just saying but then you're an overthinker though, right? Well, it's interesting what you're talking about writing process and mine has also developed over the years. And so I, I just was thinking about that as you guys were talking, not that I wasn't paying 110% attention to you. Well, like it's the same with do. her, right? She pretends to listen. But here's my writing process as it currently stands. So often I will have the, the idea when I'm, walking or doing some kind of movement it might be gardening it'll be something that's not not at the computer mm -hmm. and I'm very visual so I see I see it all as a as a movie right there so then I'll spend about a week replaying the movie in my head because you know sometimes you might have fast forwarded through a few episodes you've got to kind of you know there it all is um and often that occurs at about two or three o'clock in the morning I found that a really good time for <laughs> Uh, I just want to point out that's a horrific time. I, oh, just as a, <laughs> so then I think, okay, so I've got the movie. The movie is now complete. Like the movie is complete. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. Maybe it's three act structure. Maybe it's four if I'm feeling wild. And then I'll start and I'll write about a paragraph of the movie. And it's usually like the blurb kind of thing. But it's not a blurb, but it's just like a this is what happens kind of thing. And so then the next week is usually taken up with exploring the setting of the movie. And that involves a lot of um, Google searching. To write. Is, there, is there writing that's happened yet? <laughs> I just, can you I imagine my shock that we hadn't finished? So and, and so, and it's good. And now because I'm, again, visual, so then you've got to find the right cast for the movie. So I'm looking at the pictures and of the people and of the setting and then I add the settings 
location to my weather app on my phone so I can be in the setting at that time in terms of weather. Um, I often like to know their astrology signs as well because that does <laughs> impact. I think I'm going to start rocking about now. I just, <laughs> characters. We're now talking just, a month now, aren't we? We're talking yeah. about a month. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. do you get any on. words down at all? Or? Is it in this process? I've written the blurb. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> and then I'm thinking, so at this point, I'm in love with the idea. It's the best idea. Like, ever. anyone's ever come up with it. Yeah. I am mm. now yeah. legit starting to think do I sell it to Netflix or do I okay. hold it out yeah. for an independent? Yeah. I see where you're going. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what do I yeah. do here with mm -hmm. this? So then I think, well, in order to do that, I am going to have to actually write something down. Yeah. So I start the writing process and that will be usually shuffling between Word and Scrivener because I feel like everybody writes in Scrivener and I really want to be a writer in Scrivener. So I start in Scrivener, which involves setting up a new template because, you know. Oh my God. And then I'm frustrated i believe she's Those telling us a cautionary tale la labels they need color coordinating so then i can identify mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. what like does this know, sound familiar people no <laughs> has anyone else heard this before from her Ill, so then, ever? after about three weeks and i've written you know a reasonable amount so what's a reasonable amount give us the reasonable amount oh probably about 10k for me so that's yeah. not bad so that's yeah. okay mm -hmm. and then i realize that scrivener is not my friend because it doesn't I, so then i pull it, it put it into a word document and then i put it into a word thingy and then okay i'm back onto word again here and then I think to myself, but that movie was so good. And what I've written here doesn't actually match the movie. So then I think, well, the logical thing to do at this point is to research the market for this movie. Because what's the point in finishing if there is no market? I don't so know if you notice I've got a twitch. I pull out the Klytics, the Kindle Trends, and probably spend about three days looking at the Amazon top seller list. I reignited with my passion at this point because I think actually, you know, hey. So then mm. I get back to it and then I'm thinking of all the things that Wendy particularly is going to be saying to me about this. And so I write another 5,000 words because, you know. And what a so disappoint then Wendy. I, then I get to the point. <laughs> and then so I'm the happens. ogre. Something happens. Oh, something oh. happens. Mm. Some yeah, life yeah. event happens and I start writing. And then I pull it out about a month later, the, the document, and I think, no, that's literally the worst thing that I've ever written. And oh, so, my Lord, I'm gonna stop start it. Again. I'm going to start again. But instead of this way, it could be like this because I was close. And clearly, they didn't have the right name or they weren't the right astrology sign because, you know, there wasn't enough conflict here. <sighs> so I just put that on pause for a moment, move on. And then a year later... As I'm going through my computer, I find that first fifteen thousand words manuscript in my in my folder entitled. You've got a brown bag. Working process, and I read it again. I think, huh, that's not so bad. Has anyone and got a I brown bag? I'm hiding. <laughs> how how many? I want to know how many of these are sitting on your computer. Oh, easily twenty. Easily. Oh, oh, oh God. Easily. The pain in my chest. Yeah. So you made my face go my red. Process. I'm just like, just saying. Mm. I don't stop. Okay, just write the last one <laughs> hey, to, from woe to go. Anyone to wants to, this, to, to learn go. more about Shah's writing method, um, email her at. <laughs> So, to the business you know if you if you get re if you see this and you and you come onto facebook i want you all every week to say sha how many words have you written this yeah, week no, okay that's it, your goal a, it, you come onto facebook like and do shaming. that no, nobody can public shame me as bad as i shame myself oh, okay. me. And right. well i'm impressed that you just told practically us. getting the words done if anybody yeah. is can relate to that story in any way shape or form you know cheers to you but in all seriousness, the things that I found really help getting over there, I don't know what to write, is a timer. And I set yeah. it for 15 minutes. And that, that oh, I can do anything for 15 minutes, you know. 
that's that done. Cool. The second thing I found is my I've got one of those. Oh, they're called Alpha Smart. They're from donkeys years. Oh, I've got one of those. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, so I really, really, really like that. And also, um, I've been just using my phone app dictation. I didn't get into the whole dragon training because I can go down those rabbit holes. You may have noticed that. And that really works as well. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. What? <laughs> so, so that's my process. Yeah, thanks Over for that. Over several-year process, and usually about 10,000 words gets on added on each year to two years or so. So, mm. you know. Oh, but clearly back to work. me in 2030 and you never know clearly we have been of no help to Shah so no at all <laughs> maybe if you've got been some hanging out with her <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's no that. attention to us no I think we no need to come on the show um, I think we'd have to wrap this up because I need to lie down <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> so yes, yes thank you all for listening yeah. to another episode mm. of the spa girls mm. podcast we hope that you have learned something share even... with us your writing process yeah yes. i'd love to yeah. hear yes it. we're kind of curious yeah. whether you have a similar process to any of us or you've got something completely yeah. different yeah. We... ideally not mine because no. i don't no. yeah i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy to be honest that process so, so something yeah. that Shao or trudy might like to try you know just yeah just drop us a line and yeah just something new <laughs> throw at them what would help us and what would help peel wendy off the floor would be if you would like and subscribe to our youtube channel yeah. that would be oh, super helpful geez, as well. oh yeah and, i would love that um, if you've got any friends that are new to the writing yeah. game or even old to the writing game share our podcast with them and I will continue this journey with my son and tell you how it goes. Yeah. Family therapy in the Vela household mm-hmm. via fiction. Mm-hmm. Nice. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be yeah. interesting. Whether mm-hmm. you're Especially all as still speaking to each other. Right. Yeah. Four bucks. Mm-hmm. Woo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Might be all the start right. of an amazing new career. Anyway, okay. So thank you all for listening. Um, this has been another episode of the Spy Girls podcast. And we will see you all again next week. But for now, Bye. farewell. Bye. 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 Bye.